Hi guys, Brandy here in the kitchen. Welcome to Sewing Back. So we've made it to week three and we're gonna start our crusty bread. Um, <clears throat> we're actually gonna start it the night before we bake it. Um, when you do sourdough, you're typically, this is typically more than a day. That's usually about a 24 hour uh, process. This one you could possibly do in 12 hours if you wanted to. Um, that one's kind of up to you. I typically will start it uh, at night before I go to bed and then I won't bake it until before dinner the next night. And so we'll have um, our bread with our dinner. But you could totally do it earlier in the day. Uh, the truth of it is, is when you pull out that crusty bread, you really want it to cool for a couple hours before you cut into it. Never happens. <laughs> If you can have, if you can get that to happen in your house, kudos to you. There's just, it's just too much temptation. We want to cut into it. We want to slather on some butter or some nice olive oil and cracked pepper, and enjoy it. And so that's just typically how we do. Um, the big issue you will see if you do that, if you cut it too soon, is it's going to kind of break down a little bit of its structure. Where if you wait, you're going to see more of the air pockets and and um, like creviced out parts in um, your bread. You'll also notice those more, the more mature your sourdough gets. So this is the original sourdough we started three weeks ago from Cultures for Health. <clears throat> now, this is gonna be my third loaf that I've made with this one because I've tested out a couple. Um, I typically follow a recipe for my crusty bread from Sue Becker. It was a packet that she gave me. Let me show you. When I started wanting to do sourdough, um, I have like her old cookbook, not the newer one she has out because I met her years and years ago before that book was a thing. And she used to just have this comb bound red cookbook and I have it somewhere. I'm not sure where it's at right now. But when I wanted to do sourdough, she actually gave me a packet of sourdough um, recipes and um, things to kind of get me started. And I, fo I have followed her crusty bread pretty much um, because I'm milling, I'm taking I'm using typically milled grains and so I follow because that's what she does and that's what she teaches and speaks about is the milled grains so it's a little bit different ratio so this is what I typically use but when I did it the first time following this recipe and I only used all-purpose flour I just used the same flour we've been feeding the starter I didn't even do a um, I didn't even do the whole wheat einkorn. I just did an all-purpose einkorn and um, and no kamut, nothing freshly milled. I just was trying to do what you could easily get in your local grocery store. And what I found following this recipe with that, with um, all-purpose flour, it didn't get quite as big. And um, so then I tried a different recipe and it added, a few different things it had a few tweaks and so um, it turned out better um, using the tweaks because this was for an all-purpose flour and so I'm gonna follow this one but I'm gonna add one tweak to it that I think will possibly get me a little bit more of those crevices and things in my bread. That's what I'm hoping for. But it was delicious. Matter of fact, I probably under baked it um, by about five minutes. And so um, I'll know not to do that tomorrow. So, um, <clears throat> but it, it is a delicious bread. So I wanna show you how to do that. So let me put this one down. <coughs> And the master recipe that I got for this one um, is from um, Lisa Bass from Farmhouse on Boone. Um, this was a crusty one. She's actually got several. Um, this was a newer one she put out. Um, this is not the original one that she had because I've actually made the other one before. And um, <clears throat> But this one I think is because it was for an all-purpose flour. So uh, she actually had a podcast with another person on Instagram 
that does a lot of sourdough and it was really good. I think I shared it on my Facebook page, but um, I'll have to see if I can find it and link it in the description because it had a lot of good tricks in the podcast they talked about. Um, but one of the things she talked about was when you're doing the photography of bread that you just cannot get the same look um, with the freshly milled as you can an all, a good all-purpose flour. So um, so anyway, so I got this recipe, but I am, I am gonna add one tweak of my own. So let me tell you what you need. You need your sourdough starter. It should, be, it should have been fed already. Um, <clears throat> you need all-purpose flour. I'm using, I have switched. I ran out of the, um, what were we using? I think we were using King Arthur organic all-purpose and I, I just, I had iron corn all-purpose. So I'm just using that because that's what I had. Um, you're going to need active yeast. So that's what I have. This just came out of my freezer. You need some salt. Um, and I have a couple tools here. I have a measuring cup. I have a little spatula, a little whisk, um, a teaspoon. You're going to need that. This is a special tool I got from, uh, Jovial. And when you're using, when you're mixing up, um, these kind of, um, shaggy crusty breads they're real kind of sticky this little tool is really nice for getting the mixture up because this doesn't need a lot of kneading and um it's just a basic crusty bread and it's easy to pull together my other trick that i'm using is i'm going to use a little sugar and i do have a thermometer so that i can know exactly how hot my water is if you get your water too hot it's going to kill your active yeast, okay? And if you get it and it's um, it's too cool, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to bloom, okay? So you want it to bloom. So I uh, this is just a little thermometer I got when I got, I think I bought like a yogurt making thing from Cultures for Health, and it came with the kit. I've had it for a couple years now. And... Um, <clears throat> And so you're going to need one and one fourth cup of water and it should be 110 degrees. So for me to get that, it's about 45 seconds in my microwave. Um, but you do need to test it because, you know, all those are different. All right. <clears throat> then what you're going to need is you're going to need your yeast. Now I buy this in bulk like this and I put it in this jar and I put it in my freezer because it keeps it fresh. Um, and I put the date. I opened this on 8-23-2022, and it is good until 12-31-23. And I get this from the bread backers. Um, a lot of my products like that, they're pretty close by. I just get from them. All right, so you're going to take your teaspoon, and you're going to put... Let me move the camera so I can show. Okay, so I've got my water. I know it's, I've already used my thermometer. I know it's 110 degrees. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, you're gonna do one teaspoon. You're gonna do two, um, yeah, two teaspoons. And then one half teaspoon, okay? And you're going to put it in your water here. All right, now this is my trick I'm adding to this. Because I have found it really gets a nice elasticity when I do my pizza dough like this. I'm going to put one teaspoon of sugar. And now I'm just going to stir that around. And it says you kind of want to let it sit for about five minutes. It's probably not the right tool to stir that around with. That's why I got this out. And it said so in about five minutes, you should see some bubbling. I already see some bubbling. But that's all the sugar you're putting. It's just one teaspoon. <clears throat> so we're gonna let this sit. It says for about five minutes and let it bloom. And so while that's doing that, let's go ahead and measure 
what we need. Sorry, I do not have a glass bowl. They're dirty. So I've got, this is a metal bowl. And I have my scale. Um, if you have a food scale, she gives the measurements of grams. Like I said, when you start looking at a lot of recipes, people who like to bake, a lot of them really like to use the food scale. They like to measure in grams. But because I've tried to do this with things you can get at the store, I'm just going to stick with the cups and teaspoons and all that. All right, so while our, our stuff's getting happy over here, we're going to get our all-purpose flour. And we're going to measure out four cups of all-purpose flour. And believe it or not, I found this einkorn. This is jovial einkorn. It was on sale at the health food store. <laughs> Stopped at the other day. Cheaper than um, the, what was that other one we were using? The um, King Arthur, I think it was. Well, it was cheaper than the King Arthur and the Bob's Red Mill. It was just on sale, so I picked it up. All right, and we need one more. All right. Okay. I'm gonna put that back in. Oh, you can see this yeast is happy, happy. I figured it was gonna get happy when I put that sugar in there. If you can see that, all the bubble action. Yeah, that yeast feeds on the sugar, so. All right, so now the other ingredient we're gonna need is we're gonna need two teaspoons of salt. You have to salt your bread or it's not gonna taste good. So I'm using some of my Redmond's Real Salt. That's really the only salt I use anymore. So I got two of those in there. Get these out of here. And I'm just going to take my little special tool here and I'm just going to kind of mix, incorporate the salt with the uh, flour. And I'm going to kind of leave a, like a little dome. And you're going to take your sourdough. This is my sourdough starter. Okay. Remember, we had to move it to the bigger jar. <clears throat> now, I fed it. Oh, it smells good. Late last night. And so, that looks good. Got that nice pancake consistency. And so, I'm just going to stick my cup in here. I got a nice bubble action. Let me stick that there. Let me show you. Can you see that? Those are nice big bubbles. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my one cup because you need a whole cup of this starter and like a heaping cup. It might even come a little over, that's okay. See how that looks? That's what you want. And having one of these little doohickeys where you can scoop all the good stuff out, little spatula, that is very helpful. And see, because I'm just discarding this, just means I can turn around when I finish this and I'll feed my starter again. And after you feed it, if you think you're going to want to use it in the next day or so, then great. You can just, you know, you just keep discarding and feeding it. If not, once you feed it, put it in your refrigerator until you're ready to use it again. Because this starter is plenty well organized and perfectly capable of going in the fridge. Just remember to take it out every now and again and feed it. <clears throat> Alright. 
So now I'm just going to kind of move with this thing. If you don't have this, you can totally use your hands. Um, I've seen some wooden tools you can get. Um, before I had this, I used my hands. I just really like this tool. Okay, so we've got that in there. And our one and a fourth cup of the 110 degree water with the yeast and the sugar is in here. And so now we're just going to pour this into our flour. And we're just going to mix. And you just want to incorporate it. Like I said, this is going to be kind of a shaggy dough. It's kind of, um, I'll show you more what it looks like. And you want to get in the bottom of the bowl, get all those little pieces, and you just want to mix. So when I kind of get to the place that I'm like, okay, this looks good, that's when I take my hands and I'm going to try to clean this off a bit and then use them as my tools. just knead it in your bowl and just kind of try to get all that flour incorporated. Okay, this is what it, can you see? This is what it means by it says it's a shaggy dough. So it's not going to have that real smooth look to it. It's rustic. I didn't understand that when I was first making them and I kept adding water and flour and um, <laughs> I didn't have quite the right measurements because I kept doing that. I couldn't get a feel for it, especially using milled um, ancient grains. They have a different water content depending on which one you're using and you just kind of have to get a feel for it. It still tasted good, um, but as I said, you will get better the more you do it. It's just like anything. Okay, so, once you kinda get it, like I said, it's got that shagginess to it, that's okay. You're just gonna drop it back down in your bowl, and then you're gonna cover it. That's it, and you're gonna put it in a warm place um, for this for this one. Now, if you think you're not gonna be able to bake it, um, let's say you can't bake it till Friday. Till, tonight's Wednesday, so let's say you couldn't bake it till Friday. Um, then you might wanna let it rest in the refrigerator. You can totally do that for up to like 24 hours. It will be have a more sour flavor to it and then you pull it out let it come to room temperature and you can score it up and then you can cook it just like i'm going to show you how to cook this tomorrow um, but we're going to use this tomorrow so i'm going to put my i showed on another video my little banneton type cover you if you have a bread banneton you can put them in it I'm gonna be real honest, I don't I don't love the bread bannetons that I have floured them, done all the things, and I find that they stick, um, particularly when you're using ancient grains. Um, they're just stickier, and since this one's a little more of a shaggy one, I wouldn't recommend this one for a banneton. I would definitely say stick to a bowl, um, and a lot of times what I like to do is spray a little um, coconut oil in the bowl, just to help when I try to get it out the next day so I don't, you know, deflate it and all that. Um, <clears throat> and then you cover it, and I will actually, I like to moisten this, and then I will cover it so that my top of my bread won't dry out too bad. 
and um, I like to put it in my microwave drawer because it stays pretty warm and it does well in that. If before I had that microwave drawer, I would put, I used to put it on top of my refrigerator overnight, and I would get the best rise because there's a lot of there's a nice little heat that comes off of your refrigerator, and so if that's something you have available, that's also a good trick you can do, or the back of your stove. But anyway, you're just going to cover it, you're going to let it sit, and then I will see you in the morning, or I'll see you tomorrow, and we will bake it. I won't bake this in the morning. I'll probably bake it about midday, and we'll have it with our dinner. And, um, <clears throat> and I can show you how to do all those steps tomorrow. This is all you have to do the night before. Like I said, feed your starter, because you just took some out, okay? So you want to you wanna give it a good feeding. And then if you don't think you're going to use it for a few days, put it in the refrigerator, okay? If you're going to use it again tomorrow or the next day, then you can leave it out on the counter, all right? And that's all for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, guys. All right. We are ready to bake our crusty bread. It is um, it's about two o'clock the next day. Um, for the record, when I did this with you on camera last night, it was about 10 o'clock. Um, I don't even have to take this cover off. I can just smell that beautiful sourdough smell. And if you want to know what that is, it's kind of, I guess kind of a hoppy beer kind of vibe smell that you can smell. So I wanted to show you what it looked like. And <clears throat> the first thing you have to do, you have to do <laughs> before you can bake your bread is you have got to preheat your oven with your Dutch oven in it. Um, if you want to try to bake a loaf free form, I have not done a loaf. I've done a pizza crust like to make like um like um for lack of a better word like my own crazy bread or whatever and um i have not attempted to just put this out and do it um and the reason being is to get that rise you need it to be covered so i know there's a way to do it i just have not done that but if you do not have a dutch oven that you can bake your bread in then you know certainly try it you can try it free form but no it's probably going to be flatter because it's not going to have the um that enclosure to help give it that last rise and so um and it may cook a little bit less i don't know you would have to mine was thinner so you would have to watch it you know to to get a good bake i don't it would not be the same as doing it in a dutch oven I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I have my Dutch oven um, that I like to bake bread in. It is in my oven. I have my oven on uh, high heat at 500 degrees. Um, <clears throat> and my oven's been on for a while because I did, I actually did an oatmeal bake today. So I just left it on and turned the temperature up, put my pan in, so my pan is getting hot. That's what you want. You want that pan to be really hot for when you put your bread in, okay? So <clears throat> I am not gonna bake at 500 degrees. You just wanna get it as hot as you can. I will tell you, I need to get my pizza stone back up here because I have noticed that when I have my pizza stone on the lower rack, I get a better temperature inside my oven. I have a really uh, long rectangular pizza stone. I have a video on that um, that I got from Amazon. It was recommended by America's Test Kitchen. And I paid, I think it was like $35, $36, something like that. So um, make sure that whatever pan you're using that it can handle that kind of heat don't put a pan in there that cannot handle that kind of heat because you'll get it you'll just have a mess um so um that that is one thing i like i said we took the pan out for thanksgiving when we were cooking a lot of different stuff and we didn't have room to leave it in the oven but most of the time i leave it in my oven and i find i get better bakes on my breads and stuff so 
don't know if that's if that's a for real real thing or if it's if it's in my head but it, it has been my experience so so with that I want to um, show you what I do with the dough um, remember honestly you don't you could just pop this out so let me turn it turn you around I took this off and <clears throat> You definitely are going to want some kind of probably dough scraper if you can have one because it's going to be kind of sticky. And I've got my little doohickey here. I thought I was going to go ahead and put a little on the top. And I'm going to take this and start loosening up around the sides. Now, when you do this, it will deflate a little, but that's okay. When you put it in a Dutch oven, that's when it's going to get that rise, okay? All right. And remember, this isn't supposed to be like the perfect... I'm going to dust my space, put a little flour down. So this is not supposed to be that perfect... Um, great British baking channel loaf. It is it is a rustic loaf. This is going to be one that's really good with your um, like if you were going to do some stew or soups or something like that, or if you're doing a pasta. I think this feels good. It is a little sticky. But honestly, it's a lot less, it's more sticky if you're using uh, milled grains, particularly ancient grains. Um, it's a little bit more sticky. This is actually pretty nice. And you will fill because it's kind of, it's kind of that shaggy dough. You will fill some of these little pieces. They hardened a little as it was rising. I just work it through. In all honesty, you don't have to work it if you don't want to. You could just try to get it as best you could into a ball cut you do a couple cuts for venting I'll show you in a minute but what you really what you want to work towards is building a seam so I kind of do it in fourths all right so let me put some more of this down. The more you work it, the more it's going to want. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one time, and then I'm going to come this way. I'm going to pull another time, okay? And then I'll turn it, and I'm going to pull this end, and then I'm going to pull this end, okay? And then I just kind of turn it over, and I try to kind of round it out and curl it in so that the seam is on the inside. I have a bench scraper because sometimes when it sticks, a bench scraper is nice to try to unstick it. This wasn't too bad. All right. So as you can see, I didn't really need it a whole lot or anything. All right, that looks pretty round. And then, this is just a razor blade. Um, this came in a kit my son got me a couple years ago because it came with like the the um, the Dutch dough mixer and all that, and it had this, and I think it came with a Bannington, if I remember right. So it was just a little kit he gave me at Christmas time. So some people get really fancy with this. Because this is more of a rustic loaf, it can kind of open up. It just kind of depends. Um, so, I mean, just a real simple one is just kind of doing kind of a, um, what do you call that? <laughs> I'm saying a bracket, but it's not a bracket. Um, 
kind of like a parentheses. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to do just a couple on the side and then down this side I want to kind of do like a piece of wheat Some people really get decorative. There's a lot that you can do, but it's pretty much that simple, okay? And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my oven. I'll turn the camera just a second. I'm going to open up my oven. I'm going to place this inside my Dutch oven. I am going to put underneath the parchment, I add an ice cube in all four corners. And what that does is it helps build up that moisture when you have the lid on that is going to help give you a nice rise. Now, what I've read is if you're doing a free form, like on a pizza stone, um, you could put an ice cube in each of your four corners and it will help, that will also help your rise. Um, again, I don't know how that will work. Um, as far as timing and all that, you're going to have to kind of watch it. So we're, I'll put this in the oven. I'm going to put my ice cubes. I put my lid back on and I bake for 30 minutes at 450 degrees. And then, um, at 30 minutes, you're going to, your timer should ding. Okay and you take your lid off and then you're going to bake an additional 20 to 25 more minutes. Um, you have to watch it because if you think you're smelling it burning on the bottom, I would say it's probably better to take it out and leave it alone, let it finish cooking outside of the oven so you don't burn your bottom. Okay. The pan that I usually cook my bread in is this blue pan. It's a Le Creuset pan and it has the original top um, handle whatever you want to call it knob that they come with They're, it's a black knob they are not made for baking at this high of heat now I've known that and I've been using it I've already lost one um, and you can buy the ones that are high heat they run about to, uh, for the large ones I think they're they run around 30 bucks somewhere in there they have um, a gold one, they have like a, a silver or nickel looking one, and then they have a copper one. Well, I was able to score one copper one and I loved it on my green pan so much, I put it on there. And, <laughs> and I've continued to bake in my blue pan. And I wanted to show you what happened today. It caught fire. The knob, I'm not gonna touch this, very hot. So what I did is I just switched my green lid for my blue lid that has the safe um, knob on it. But if you have these pans, you need to be aware of that. I did order the, um, the day after Thanksgiving. They had a big sale, um, and they had them back. They had the copper ones back in stock. So I have ordered two more copper knobs to put on. My blue pan, I also have a big red oval Dutch oven, and that way I'll have copper on all three of my, my pans that I own. So I want to go ahead and pull out of my freezer. I'm going to pull out a few ice cubes. Because you don't really want to leave your oven open for a, a long time. You let out that hot, hot hot heat and I told you wrong about the temperatures you're going to turn it down to 400 not 450 okay all right so I've got my bread over here we're going to put this in so you'll see I have my green lid on that's the 
um, copper top and it can handle up to over 500 degrees. So you're going to put it in your Dutch oven, you're going to drop it not on top of the bread, underneath your parchment. This is where I put my ice cubes. And now I'm gonna cover it back up. That's gonna help it rise. We're gonna close up the oven. I'm gonna turn it to 400. That's another reason if you heat it up at a higher temperature, when you, when you open up the oven and you lose some of your heat, if you're turning it down to the normal baking temperature at that point, you should be good. Pull it out. Hopefully it's not gonna fog you up. Do you see how much the bread rose? Okay, let me put this up, sorry. Because that's hot. Don't forget those things are hot, by the way. So this is what it looks like, okay? So we're gonna return it back in here, close it up. And you're gonna set, you're gonna cook it for another 20 minutes to 25. I'm gonna check it at 20. That was my second timer. <laughs> so let's look at it. You won't fog up. Um, it's looking pretty good. That's my other timer. I'm actually going to leave mine in five more minutes. And this is why I told you the hard part <laughs> is not cutting into it. It's not cutting into it. Now, you can see a little bit of my decoration, but it kind of exploded. And I can see a few things. It is what it is. <laughs> Maybe you'll be better at decorating than I am. But that is what the crusty bread looks like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it down, set this down, so I can get my pot holders. So I can, so we can see what the bottom looks like. Ah, see? Let's see. That's a nice bottom. Oh, that's hot. That's what you want. If, that's what I smelled. I knew if I kept it in, it was going to burn my bottom. You don't want a soggy bottom and you don't want a burnt bottom. So you want something in between and that is what I have right here. It looks well cooked, well baked. It's got, got a good sound pretty good. Now I will tell you um, if you're milling your own and you make this recipe it's definitely going to have a little bit darker color and so that one can, the darker color can throw you a little bit for the bake so just be mindful of it and because you you don't want raw dough so all right so it has been it is now 7:30, and remember we pulled this out about 3:20 ish from the oven and so now i'm going to cut it this is the longest one i've ever let sit <laughs> normally we eat it when it comes out i'm trying to think of how i want to cut it this is why it's called crusty bread and if any of you know a good bread knife share it in the comments because this one has not been good. It's old. So that's what it looks like. And that one actually looks pretty well baked. And so that is your sourdough crusty bread, the rustic. And I know it's going to taste good, so I don't even have to. I'll taste it now. <laughs> it's good it's chewy the inside's soft um the outside is chewy so your your jaws are going to get a workout but that's what you want i love it got some nice air up in there 
so I'll take it. So anyway, that's how you do it. And let me know if you try it and if you like it. I will put the um, I will put the recipe in the description and um, I will try to link to that podcast I talked about earlier in the video. With that, I appreciate you checking us out and we will see you next time. Bye.